Higher end speakers will often have two jack insertion plugs so that multiple speakers can be daisy chained. Here is an example JBL wedge or monitor speaker with two female jacks. Physically, a speaker wire can run from the power amp to this speaker, then another wire can be used to run from this first speaker over to a second, and the chain can be continued to a third and a fourth speaker and so on. However, this is not recommended. Not without some engineering calculations at least. The problem is, for every speaker that is added in this fashion, the resistance is dropped and the power amp will try to maintain constant voltage by increasing the current. This extra current draw can overdrive and overheat the amp, resulting in either a blown fuse or permanent damage to the amp. This can get a little technical, but I'll attempt to explain in as simple a terms as possible. First, it is important to understand the power amps that are driving the speakers. For the three portable systems we've discussed earlier, the Fender, the Gig Rack, and the Samsung, these each have built-in amplifiers. What was not stated earlier is that each system actually has two independent amplifiers. And by looking at the owner's manual, we discover that each amplifier is designed to nominally drive two speakers for each amplifier for a total of four speakers per system. However, this is still an oversimplification. Now comes the technical part, so hang on to your hats. For the speakers we are dealing with, they come in one of two flavors. The electrical resistance or impedance is either 4 ohm or 8 ohm. Over on the power amp side, the amps are typically designed to drive a minimum impedance of 4 ohms. But it is essential that you look at the owner's manual or the power rating plaque on the back of the unit to know the exact rating. So let's look at the back of the gig rack first. Here we can see on the plaque on the back, right near the, where the speakers connect in, that it is rated for a minimum of 4 ohms. So what does that mean in terms of what can we connect? Well, let's look at the gig rack manual for a further explanation and diagram. Looking in the gig rack owner's manual, we see a couple of figures that explain appropriate speaker configurations. In figure 1, we see a single 8 ohm speaker connected to one of the input jacks, which is actually connected to one of the amps, and another speaker connected to the other amp. For the rating plaque on the back, this is a fine configuration. It's not shown, but if these speakers were each 4 ohm type of speakers, that would also be an okay configuration. Now let's look at figure 2. It turns out that when you daisy chain two speakers together, it looks to the amplifier as though you've cut the resistance in half. In other words, two 8 ohm speakers that are daisy chained together have the equivalent impedance of a single 4 ohm speaker. Again, this is an okay configuration. And so you see in figure 2 that it is allowable in this configuration to drive four speakers, two off of one amp and two off of the other amp, provided that two speakers are 8 ohm each. This leads us to a possible case where the speakers might be 4 ohms each. If that were the case, when they're daisy chained together, would be the equivalent impedance of 2 ohms and connected it to one of the amps, one of the outputs of the gig rack, we would be overdriving the amplifier by a factor of two. So you can only imagine if we were to daisy chain three or four speakers together, how much lower the resistance would be and how much more we'd be overdriving the power amp. There's one last detail that I've judiciously avoided discussing and that is the volume coming out of the amp. Everything we've talked about so far have assumed that you really have got that volume cranked all the way to the max. And that's when you get the max current draw and that's when you blow a fuse or damage the amp. If you knew you were going to keep the amplifier volume really low, then you might be okay adding additional speakers. But that's a pretty big if. And so to be on the safe side, it's just a good idea to, to stick with the rating and stick with the right number of speakers. And that gives you complete freedom to use the volume as much as you like. Let's switch over to the Fender system for a minute. Looking at the owner's manual, it states that the minimum impedance is 4 ohms per channel. Turns out that speakers that come with the Fender system are 8 ohm speakers. Also to be noted, there's only one plug on the speaker. So with these speakers, it's not really possible to do daisy chaining. However, let's look at the speaker output ports on the Fender amplifier up in the front. You can see here that there are actually two outputs on the left, two outputs on the right, or on the main and the monitor, depending on which mode you're in. So if you were to plug in two 8-ohm Fender speakers into one side, 
That's the equivalent of a daisy chain and the resulting impedance is 4 ohms on that one amplifier. This is allowed, but there's no additional daisy chaining allowed on top of that. So again, for the Fender system you can connect up 4 speakers if they are 8 ohm, but if you have 4 ohm speakers you should not be plugging 2 4 ohm speakers into those two jacks there. Did this tutorial help? I hope so. It's a little confusing. Hopefully I helped clarify some parts of it. Sorry that the answers are not more clear cut, but consult with your local electrical engineer before daisy chaining any of those speakers together.